let me say now, this unit is hands down, bar none, without question, the closest that I have seen a digital monocular come to the performance of analog. Reach for the sky. YouTube, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Gunplay TV, and today I've got something all new once more from the guys at Goodnight Gear. So, off the bat, you already know we're getting ready to talk night vision, and today we've got the ADNV G14 SE. So, a mouthful, ADNV, of course, Advanced Digital Night Vision G14 SE is this particular model. Now, once more, this was sent to me from the guys at Goodnight Gear for review. Great folks over there, a lot of low light and no light products are on offer, so feel free to check them out and there will be a discount code if you're interested in picking one of these up. So ADNV or Advanced Digital Night Vision is a China-based company. China, China, China. I deal with China, 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 big league. Some of you will be turned off immediately, but if you decide that you want to click out the video, let me say now, this unit is hands down, bar none, without question, the closest that I have seen a digital monocular come to the performance of analog. This has got some of the sharpest picture, some of the best low light performance, and hands down, the best real time stabilized image feed that I've seen through any digital monocular to date. This blows out of the water the performance of the NVG30, the NVG10, and frankly, probably any of the other digital night vision solutions that you've seen offered on YouTube. Now, that being said, the performance that you're going to see in this video comes at a price. This unit, the G14 SE, starts around $1,700, $1,800, and once more, you will be able to save a good chunk of bread by using the coupon code that you see on screen. So that being said, once more, this unit was sent to me for review from the guys at Goodnight Gear. That, however, did not feature any financial compensation to boot, and so the opinion that you're going to get in this video is purely my own. Now, right off the bat, again, hands down the best performance that I've seen out of the digital monocular. I want to go ahead and give you guys that up front. That is truly how impressed I am with this unit. Now, again, it's a relatively simple digital monocular, very small. It does feature the ability to run off a CR123 style battery, as well as you have the ability out of the box to step up to a larger 18650 cell. So that's going to boost your performance all the more, as well as giving you more battery options. I see no issue with that off the bat. Now, again, it's a digital unit. It's not going to run all day, all night, like the analog offerings. Now, that being said, I only did one battery charge on this unit, only to top it off for testing. Frankly, I don't think that that was necessary, but I do want to preface that I was not able to run this battery all the way to zero. Outside of the battery, of course, you do have your ocular and objective lenses. Um, your objective lens on this unit is uh, actually kind of small, oddly so, but frankly, again, the performance out of this unit leaves very little to be desired, so I have no issue with the small objective lens. Now, your ocular lens is much larger, and I can tell you right off the bat, the lenses, the optics that they use in this unit are, once more, some of the better that I've seen out of a digital unit. Now, these aren't necessarily going to be bumping shoulders with the Carson lenses, in your analog mil spec type offerings. But once more for the price and for the fact that this is digital, I did get some very good clarity out of this. Frankly, even with the NVG30, which you guys have seen in the channel previously, I think that in addition to the optical image stabilization or lack thereof, one thing that the NVG30 could improve on is the optics. And frankly, the optics on this unit are pretty damn good. I will roll in what information I was able to find Again, this being a Chinese company, some information about this product is a bit nebulous at the moment. Additionally, it does feature an IR illuminator, kind of par for the course, certainly for almost all digital night vision, but even some of the better analog offerings will include an IR emitter, so certainly nice to have that as well. Additionally, it does have a multi-pin accessory port up front. Now that accessory port is going to allow you the ability to connect an off-board recorder to the unit. So if you want to record the footage that you are seeing on your hunt, on your hike, or what have you, you can do that with the G14 SE. Now in the interest of full disclosure, unfortunately when testing this unit, I was not able to get the off-board recording function to work. I don't think that that's indicative of build quality or the manufacturer. However, again, this is a review unit. It's been shared with other YouTube reviewers, 
and likely has been subjected to some wear and tear. I think there may have been an issue with the cable on the box itself. Now, because I wasn't able to get the off-board recorder working, I was forced to use my camera and my cell phone. But I wanted to make sure that the test was fair and equitable across all three units. And for that reason, as I recorded footage through each of the devices, I made sure to consistently use the same settings on the same cameras each time. Now, once more, this is a digital monocular, um, as is the MBT30, so filming through these units is essentially the same as filming the screen with the camera. Not necessarily a true to life representation. So I want you to bear in mind as you watch this, and you are looking at a video feed of a screen. That being said, all footage was captured using the same cameras in the same camera settings to hopefully level the playing field as much as possible. So as you guys watch some of the video on screen, I'll tell you a bit about the T14 SE. So right off the bat, it's going to feature a two thirds inch second generation high performance CMOS solid state image sensor. Mouthful, what does that mean in English? Essentially some of the top performance that you can get from digital. I will never purport to be the end all be all with night vision, digital, or otherwise. However, as an end user, what that means for you is high sensitivity, meaning you're gonna be able to pick up more light in low light situations, as well as very low latency and clear imaging in real time. Now, I will tell you that as I wore this unit, that was one of the first things that jumped out to me. Not only does this do a very good job in intensifying low light environments almost to the level of an analog tube, but it also features essentially real time output. Now that's not really a consideration when you're using an analog tube, everything's real time. But with digital, you've got to consider it like a camera. It's taking in the image and then spitting it out. Oftentimes there's a little bit of time loss in between the capture of the image and the presentation of the image to the user. This cuts that down effectively to zero. Now this thing features two shooting modes, both a 50 frames and a 100 frames per second mode. Of course, as I was testing this, I kept it in 100 frames per second. Now that will, of course, drain the battery a bit faster, but you are going to get a more seamless performance as far as real-time imaging. In addition to that, I don't know what type of optical image stabilization has been featured in this, but as you move, as you run, you jump, you roll, what have you, this thing is as good as it can get as far as I'm concerned. Now I've mentioned this in a number of the NVG30 videos that I've released in the past, but one of the strengths of digital night vision is that it can be used in both low light as well as well lit environments. It doesn't suffer from the same sensitivity to high light situations as analog, meaning you can carry this thing out and about in the desert of Arizona, middle of the day and have no qualms about the sanctity of your tube. Whereas if I was to do the same thing with my AR NVGs, I certainly would elect to put day caps on and probably keep them in the pack until sundown. So there's added peace of mind in that. Additionally, this unit comes in at around $1,700 to $1,800, significantly cheaper than what you might call the entry level offerings, the likes of a PBS 14 or even a Jerry 14. Those are gonna hit you for about four grand, maybe three on a good day, maybe 2,500. Again, this coming in at around 17, 18, less with the coupon code, makes it very compelling. And I hope that the footage that I've captured for you guys really does help paint the picture of the performance from this unit, especially when compared to my Elbit tubes and my Air NVGs. Now this unit does also feature an OLED screen on the inside. Now that is going to allow you to get deeper blacks as well as just a crisper picture overall, as well as better battery life and battery performance. And so I like that an OLED has been included. Now the OLED that's featured is at an 800 by 600 resolution. That doesn't sound like a whole lot, but again, this is a device that's gonna sit one, maybe two inches from your eye. That's certainly more than enough in my experience. Now again, the frame rate on this being as is a digital unit is going to be something to be considered. That's essentially the amount of images or photos that the unit is taking per second and putting them in front of your eye. The more, the better, right? The more images that that camera can take and place in front of your eye, the more seamless the footage that you receive is going to be. So the G14 SE comes in with two shooting modes at 50 frames per second and a 100 frames per second. Now, as I was testing this unit, I opted to keep it in the 100 frames per second throughout the testing. Again, 
the more frames per second, the more real time and seamless of an experience you are gonna have as an end user. Now, as far as the water resistance on this unit, it is IP67, so it's going to be resistant to most splashes, even an occasional drop in a puddle, so long as you don't leave it submerged for an extended period of time. Now, I was able to lightly get some testing of the water resistance. Actually, I took this out for testing um, the night before Hurricane Helene made landfall here in the States. I was actually home visiting family when the storm hit and I figured probably a good opportunity to get out and do some testing. Now, of course, a stormy night, not gonna be the most well lit. Of course, there's a little bit of water, very cloudy. I figured it'd be a good test for the unit's performance. So as I was driving around looking for a low light area to film with hopefully not too many people who raise eyebrows, I stumbled upon this abandoned movie theater parking lot and I figured this was a perfect spot. For one, it was very dark and it featured the occasional street light in that parking lot in addition to the very dark, poorly lit areas as well. And I figured it'd give me a good opportunity to test the unit's dynamic range. Now, as far as the weight on the unit, it's gonna come in at around 250 grams in the CR123 configuration and a bit higher at 286 grams with an 18650, of course, depending on the weight of that battery cell. Again, still a very, 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 very light unit. I can't stress enough. Again, I use AR NVGs. They are very rugged. They are built to withstand an explosion, frankly, but they're made of aluminum um, and they're not extremely light when compared to something like this. And so I gotta tell you, when you put this on, especially if you're only running one, it's a very low weight solution and it suited my Karkaju Tactical Boonie very well. So what you're looking at here on screen is my Karkaju Tactical Boonie also featuring the Tracer Tactical NVG head harness. And the two of them essentially got together to ensure that they both made a product that worked together. And so you can of course run the head harness separate and independent of the Karkaju Tactical Boonie and the Boonie independent of the head harness. But if you buy the two, you can merge them together featuring a night vision shroud and you have a very low weight, low signature, frankly, means of running your night vision. And I found that the G14 SE suited it very well, especially with its low weight. So that's more or less gonna wrap it up for the G14 SE from AD and VG. Again, I can't stress enough how impressed I am with this unit. In fact, I begged the guys at Goodnight Gear to let me keep it. They said no, they've got other reviewers that need to test it out. And so unfortunately, I'm gonna have to spend my hard earned dollars on something like this because again, for digital, for the weight, for the price, this is, probably the best night vision that I think you can buy. And it's certainly, without question, the best digital night vision that I've ever laid my hands on. So let that say what it will. For anyone out there who is in the market for night vision and is looking for something that's not on the super cheap end of the spectrum, but isn't looking to drop four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 12, 40 grand on night vision, this is seriously worth a look. Again, once more, hands down, Without question, the best performance I've ever seen out of a digital unit, and frankly, the closest that I've ever seen anything come to analog that wasn't true analog. I don't know what kind of dark magic they are using over there in China, but the gap is closing between digital and analog. Anyone in the night vision space will tell you, we've always known there will come a day where digital not only catches up to analog night vision, but surpasses it. That day, I think, is still on the horizon. However, after testing this, I think that day is all that much closer. All that being said, guys, I'm gone.